On this page of notes, we're going to continue to look at our position versus time graphs and how to generate a velocity versus time graph and vice versa, taking a look at our velocity versus time graph and going back to our position versus time graph. And honestly, it's, it's more of the same that we just talked about, but now we have some different uh, time intervals uh, and different uh, values to look at. So let's walk through it and see how you would generate the velocity versus time graph from this position versus time graph. So we're back to that example we used for our round trip. We start at position 0, go up to 200, stay at position 200, go from 200 to 150, 150 back to negative 100, and then it's a round trip motion back to position 0 after 60 seconds. So even though it looks like we're going uphill and sideways and downhill and downhill and uphill. It's not uphill and downhill at all. It's, it's forward, right, on the x-axis. Here we're not moving, right? So that to the right only means in time. We're not moving. We're just sitting at position 200, and then we're going backwards, backwards, forward, okay? Well, if we want to know the average velocity, over all of these intervals, we have to look to see where the slopes of these line changes, lines change and calculate them. So the average velocity from 0 to 10 seconds is given by our rise, right? Positive 200 over our run, 10. So positive 200 divided by 10 gives us the positive 20, and we just plot that out. So from 0 to 10 seconds, we have an average velocity, right, that doesn't change over any interval in that 10 seconds. So it remains positive 20. And then we're going to put an open circle here, right, because instantaneously it changed to no average velocity, right? The slope of our secant line from B to C is 0. And we have a then open closed, open, and we go then to the slope from C to D is, again, rise, which in this case is a fall, right? So it's final minus initial over T final minus T initial, so negative 10 meters per second, and we plot that from C to D because the velocity itself is not changing over any interval from 20 to 25. So whether it's 20 to 21 or 21 to 22, it remains at negative 10 and so forth. So we'll calculate the slope then. It changes a little bit from D to E. I don't have the calculations shown, but that would be, it looks like negative 12.5 from D to E, open circle. And then finally, our slope from E to E. F is going to be positive 5. So when going from a position versus time graph to a velocity versus time graph, we will always get these horizontal step functions until we fully introduce calculus and have smoothed out functions. So for right now, we are working just with these discrete time intervals, focusing on the relationships between position and velocity, uh, whether we're looking at slopes or areas, right? So when going from a position versus time graph to a velocity versus time graph, it's all about the slope, right? Now, if we were given our velocity versus time graph, let's go back and get that position versus time graph out of there. So if we were given the velocity versus time graph but not shown the, the position versus time graph, how would we go from our velocity versus time graph back to our position versus time graph. Well, that is going to be all about the area, right? So to calculate the area, this first step I think is really important. Go to the zero velocity line and kind of darken that in with whatever your favorite color is because you're going to be calculating areas, right? So delta x is going to be an area calculation based on the base and the height. The height here, so please get all of these annotations into your notes, can be positive or negative. The height can be positive 
When the function is up top, it will be negative. When the function is below, so even though these area calculations always have positive magnitude, right? We can designate them as positive areas when they're above and negative areas when they're below. When we calculate these base times heights, keep in mind we always get the change in the position. We do not know the starting point. We need to be given our initial value, and then I know I start at position 0 if I'm, I'm given that, and go to position positive 200, and you're going to play connect the dots. So when going from a velocity versus time graph to a position versus time graph, you are playing connect the dots. So no area. Notice no area between the function and my horizontal green line. So connect the dots. Negative 50 is my area here. Negative 50, remember, means the change in position. Please do not go down and put a dot at negative 50. All right? So you're calculating the change in the position, delta x3. So you lost 50. You went backwards 50, starting at 200 to 150. Connect the dots. And then you can see how the rest of this game is played. Change in position, negative 250. Connect the dots. Change in position, positive 100. Connect the dots. So there you have it. You'll definitely have some problems to practice on on your own to kind of get used to doing this, but it, it takes time and you have to let, let it kind of absorb and become part of what you know how to do. So hopefully that was helpful to you and we can talk about it, of course, more in class.